Hey guys, this is Gatsby with Tape, and today you join me for episode 9 of Collaborative Warfare, and today we have some glorious news. In the last turn that Penguin took, he finally managed to not decimate me. Um, he's been doing a very good job of destroying a lot of bases recently, but this time, not so much. He launched his moon base so he can mine ore to, you know, build nukes, and uh, that's something interesting that will be coming and may put space combat back on the table. Um, but the main thing... Uh, is he attacked two bases, uh, one of which he failed to destroy um, because the turret took out his missiles because he was using Mavericks like a fool and then when he tried to attack, um, I've totally forgotten the name of the base but his the second base he attacked, he was shot down by my glorious gun turret so he has lost another Deimos, no, uh, one of them I don't know, he's lost both of his planes now so we have slaughtered him but now we have a little, a little window in which we must push back against the Penguin Empire, take his bases, murder all of his things, and also take back Edis' side, because he seems to think that I wouldn't be taking that back because um, of all the other things that are going on. But no, we shall destroy it like men, or to, to battle or something. But first we have a little bit more glorious news, where he crashed in our uh, base he dropped his two Kerbals, one of whom was John B. Kerman. So I'm rearming my um, turret by, well, the, the rockets are on it so I can get it off this launch pad. Um, I just strapped them on, but ba basically when you, um, this fired off it's all its missiles, so I'm just simply rearming it. Uh, just trying to keep it away from these buildings, and then I'm going to land it on parachutes and maybe a little bit of engines. So that um, <coughs> I can drive it over and wreak my evil plan, I mean my totally non-evil, super good, nice person plan. Anyway, and this is going pretty well. This is just my standard turret uh, that I've been using quite a lot. A lot more effective now we've up the guard range. I keep shooting down all of Penguin's missiles and killing his planes. Um, that goalkeeper's really good at shooting down his tactical bombers. Maybe he's going to have to work on some more maneuverable fighters and things. Anyway, that's down and all good, so um, now we just need to drive over to his Kerbals. The first one is of no use to me, no no importance, so I'll just execute them quickly. This will also scare Jombie uh, into, you know, um, cooperating, because he doesn't want to die because he's a penguin coward. But uh, Penguin does very much is very much fond of Jombie. So, um, instead of negotiating his return and trying to get lots of things, which will actually cost Penguin his moon base a plane and a base on Kerbin, um, I'm going to strap him to this turret so that Penguin can't shoot him because Penguin wouldn't kill his own man. He wouldn't, he wouldn't murder him. He wouldn't murder John B. Kerman. Um, but yeah, so <laughs> hopefully that'll hold true even though Penguin is mad and evil. Anyway, he's strapped to the turret now, obviously has no control, it's just uh, strapped there to die. And then we'll put this near the base, I've cut most of this out um, because it's boring stuff. Um, and then uh, put it on guard mode and just, yeah. Uh, most of this, uh, well, all of this uh, episode is post-commentary because I haven't had time. And the, actually the one bit of post-commentary I did, on, did do on an attack, oh no, one bit of live commentary I did do on an attack run got corrupted. So you're stuck with um, post-production me, which is uh, probably good. It's a very long episode and it's largely the same as other things I've done before, but far more interesting, much better. Anyway, so we are at uh, KSE 2. Launching an MPAV Raptor. Yes, we haven't used this in a little while. Um, but it's time to go and thwart Penguin because he's so easily thwartable. This is actually slightly updated. Um, very, only very slightly. It's carrying four missiles instead of... Uh, not four. It's carrying eight missiles instead of six because I need to hit a lot of bases today. We're going to go and take back um, Twin Peaks because he hasn't rearmed the turret there that I destroyed last turn, which is good because that would be rather annoying. If I actually had to take it out, although I'm not entirely... The satellite imagery does make it look like it isn't totally destroyed. So it might put up a little bit of a fight, but I can't imagine it would be a problem. Um, so yeah, we're going to go take that, and that's why I'm using the VTOL, because that's a heliport. Um, and then we're going to go and hit a couple more of his bases. I would hit a third. Um, well, actually, there's multiple reasons why I didn't hit a third. I was actually running low on fuel by the end of this, so I didn't really think it would be a good idea, even though I actually could have gone and hit one. Um... And the other was I actually want to take back Edis side and we have a limit of four uh, bases we can hit now so we don't just go crazy and destroy everything. 
Um, anyway, so let's uh, go into four times time accelerated and fly this out over to uh, Twin Peaks Valley and take what is rightfully ours. Well, everything on Kerbin is rightfully ours. The territorial Arctic protection on Taunt will not stand for these evil penguins, um, these, these evil crazy penguins and these evil twitchies. I guess we could maybe stand a little bit for Aganarch since he's been rather helpful, actually. Um, and I have, of course, repaid him last turn by thwarting uh, one of Twitchy's bases. Um, the Penguin seems to think he can control me. He tried to dare me into taking his moon base, and I was like, no, I'm just gonna... What good's a moon base when you don't have a Kerbin? Uh, <laughs> and he tried to keep me away from Twitchy last turn, but my helicopter, te he helicopter technology is so superior that I could fight back with a plane and, uh, of course, launch a helicopter to assault Twitchy. I've also been working on a new uh, helicopter, even better, 220 kilometer range, as opposed to the about 150 I had before. Um, helicopter technology is going to be pretty important now, because it actually counts as a ground unit, so you can launch a plane and a helicopter, and a turret, or two helicopters, or a boat! And planes, because everyone likes planes. Anyway, uh, fairly standard transit. Another one of these kind of... See, the problem with short transits is you... With a turbojet, you want to get up really high and go really fast to be most efficient. However, that's quite difficult over like a 100 kilometer jump. And that was fine with my tactical bomber, which is super powerful, because so it could just blast itself into a trajectory that was basically like an arc. It didn't even have to really burn its engines for that long. But this is actually relatively low, uh, has a relatively low thrust to weight ratio, so it's kind of an inefficient transfer which is a bit of a shame. So yeah, I don't really get that much up to speed or that much up to altitude, but still, it's a f relatively short jump, so this uh, Raptor should be fine. This, this, this The Empire Raptor has a pretty, it has a pretty in, it, like impressive range for such a kind of, well, it's kind of a bulky aircraft and, you know, it's not got tons of fuel, but it's, it's pretty good. Anyway, uh, time for our attack run, and it will just come out of four times time accelerate into our attack, I guess. Uh, quick save there kind of screws it up a little bit, um, but yeah, oh, the quick saves just take so freaking long. Um, although I I did just four times time accelerate the uh, quick save, but anyway, let's just drop into this valley and uh, let's slip the dogs of war or whatever. Anyway, just lots of murder. Um, although I'm pretty sure it's I I'm pretty sure the turret's still active, but pointing the other way. But still, I'm gonna drop a hellfire missile in there and just kind of deal with it because. Um, I don't want it shooting me in the back, which I'm pretty sure it would do, because, yeah, anyway, um, apparently last turn I was actually not very effective at destroying this. I forgot when I hit it, I, oh yeah, I hit it with the, um, oh, of course, it's because I hit it with, I think Penguin didn't rearm this, because he think I didn't hit it, he thought I didn't hit it at all, um, but I actually got in quite a few missiles before my uh, bomber crashed into the mountain. I have to say, Penguin has been at a bit of a disadvantage this turn, that she broke his hand from, um, like punching puppies or whatever, or whatever he does on his uh, on his days off, you know, going and stealing orphans' food and burning down charity centers. Uh, <laughs> basically, he's evil. Um, no, no, but yes. Anyway, I'm going to get in really close because I'm pretty sure it's totally disarmed. But still, I think it deserves a missile. And then, uh, yeah, just watch that hit. I'm pretty sure that'll tear it apart some. It's like a fragment of turret at this point. Um, and then just kind of skirt around and uh, I guess just land on the VTOLs and plant my flag in a bit. And yeah, there's a pretty good hit. It looks like it, something's been thrown from it. Yeah, you can see it did have some guns and a probe core. Um, and I think I had a bunch of other stuff which I blew off. Anyway, after a quick landing, um, very edited episode, so there'll be lots of annoying, boring bits of flight cut out. So yay, yay for post commentary. Anyway, so after landing a little bit skewifly, I should probably make this slightly better at landing. Um, I've been working on a few things with the Empire, actually. I, I uh, added some um, rototrons from the IR pack, the Infernal Robotics pack, so that it could um, rotate those VTOL engines for extra thrust and just, like, braking and things. But um, they added, like, 0.4 tons, which is quite a lot on a VTOL. So, yeah, I ended up not going for that. Um, so, yeah, I'm just going to tuck that wheel away um, to right myself, and then I'm just going to drive a little closer to the base so I have a less long walk because walking is lame. Anyway, yeah, here we go. Uh, just kind of um, transiting. Quite a bumpy plane, kind of a bumpy environment, which is a little um, a little annoying. I would have just landed closer, but I'm trying to be really careful with fuel because I um, have, well, I have two more bases to hit. Uh, well, I originally planned three, but I was really worried about fuel, but I think I could, like, get back Oh, I've ruined that I don't get killed, but yeah, obviously, I, I slaughter Penguin this episode, and I slaughtered him in his turn, 
basically, I'm yeah, I'm not even going to build up suspense. I slaughtered him. Um, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so I'm just going to fire a few more shots at this because just just just, just, just screw all of this. I, anyway, that's all parked up. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm just going to plant my flag there and do all my standard stuff. Anyway, as I was saying, I actually could have hit the third base because I had about 170 units of fuel left when I got back to the KFC too. But pff, it worked out best because I could hit Edda's side as well, which you will see at the end of the episode. Anyway, new turret, big old flak turret with lots of missiles and lots of armor and some turrets. Uh, some Vulcan turrets, yeah. Um, just a quick look at that. I probably should have left. Uh, I totally forgot while editing this that that was a new turret. But yeah, basically it's highly armored. Um, it has the, you could see those curved panels if you look. Um, those are made for deflecting things, I guess, and also just taking the brunt of impacts. Um, obviously it has a flat cannon because I'm quite partial to flat cannons these days. And it has a standard, uh, the same missile setup as the gun turrets. Uh, four Amrams, four Sidewinders, um, shit tons of ammo, and some Vulcan cannons um, for mainly shooting down missiles. Anyway, on to the next uh, base. Um, we're actually heading to Penguin's Ocean Odyssey in the big uh, Kerbal Crater, you know, the massive one in the ocean. Um, yeah, we're heading to the uh, KSS Odyssey, I think, which is uh, a boat over there, um, which is an actual base. Ocean Odyssey, even. Anyway, skipping through that flight, because in the interest of keeping this relatively short, uh, well, I mean, it's a pretty long episode, so, you know. Anyway, I'm just going to dive down. Um, I haven't used too much fuel getting here, actually, but I was about at half fuel right now, so I was kind of panicking, because I kind of want to get back to KSC2. I really want to keep this uh, Raptor safe, and, uh, you know. Anyway, so let's uh, fly in and drop some bombs. Well, I guess five missiles. Oh, they're, they're explosive. It's it's dropping bombs, whatever. Anyway, I think it's another PE lad down there, which uh, they're pretty good turrets. I mean, they... they're uh, <laughs> they haven't been super effective against me. I've noticed since um, uh, we've turned up the the guard range, my turrets have gotten a shit ton more effective because they were kind of designed for 10 kilometer defense range, whereas I'm not sure about the um, Penguin ones, although his new turrets are pretty badass. Um, but anyway, let's just pop off a couple of missiles. That's three. I've got, I'm only hitting one more base, and I have tons of missiles. Um, but anyway, and then pull away, dodge these missiles. It, the thing about the lad, actually, is it has... Um, intercept and sidewinder missiles which makes it kind of worry that's actually pretty good for long range I mean those intercept missiles um, I think it was firing those sidewinders actually at my missiles um, almost got hit by a sidewinder there but luckily avoided it somehow not entirely sure how the hell that happened but um well uh, <laughs> it did look like it hit me but I guess I'm just lucky um, and it looks like we've destroyed the uh, turret which is good yeah pretty wrecked on his uh, little boat. This is also a launch site um, for missiles, which is worryingly close to my territory. So I might take that next turn. Um, well, I, you know, it's fair I have to take it uh, next turn because it's just, it's only penguin. Um, it's fun throwing slander at penguin. Um, oh yeah, interesting. Um, a penguin broke his fingers, which means he has hands, which means he's not a penguin, which means he's a liar. So now he's a terrorist, a Nazi, a war criminal, and a liar. Yep, pretty evil. Um, I, I always just kind of thought that Penguin was a penguin, but apparently he is a human masquerading as a penguin. Uh, um, so, you know, don't trust him. Um, you know, just, you know. Anyway, let's drop some more bombs on this other bit of the crater. I like this crater. I want this crater. This is some sort of observatory. I'm sure he's, you know watching all of our satellites moving, planning on stealing them. That's probably where he plans his satellite stealing maneuvers. Um, yeah, anyway, let's uh, just drop some missiles in and watch his turrets die. Uh, but uh, yeah, as I said, I really want this crater. It's really nice having loads of these bases close together and things. Um, and if I take one, I could probably launch some pretty effective helicopter strikes because they're not very far away from each other. Um, so yeah, I'm just dropping in from above. Trying to be really efficient with fuel, not using too much. Um, I'm not particularly worried, because this is a relatively maneuverable plane, so I don't worry too much about the um, uh, the missiles, and the turrets are really close range, which is probably the downfall of his defenses. Um, but we, I, I think he's implementing flat cannons, as am I, which is uh, kind of worrying. And again, most of those missiles went for um, the my missiles, which I think is actually a matter of a problem with setting our scan intervals really low. I've been working on that. Um, anyway, all my missiles are landed, I just fired all of them because might as well, I've got a long flight back. And yeah, pretty uh, pretty good. Anyway, after a bit of a 
a uh, bit of a long flight back. This uh, The flight back actually went pretty well. I got up to proper speed because on the way over to the crater, I was only going about 700 meters a second instead of about a kilometer per second because I screwed a few things up, which did, which was a little little problematic. But we were really efficient getting back. I still have quite a bit of fuel. Um, and I decided to land this on the runway just to see kind of how it does like this. Um, and with the air brakes, it's very effective. Um, I touched down quite nicely. Uh, yeah. Um, anyway, yeah, as I said, I've cut out most of like the f just long flights because I always leave them in and you see them all the time. And I just thought this is, I've done a lot this episode. So you probably just want to kind of see the action, the, the key events. I've tried to, you know, cut those down to key events. So, you know, hitting the three bases, taking off landing, um, you know, just anyway. So uh, landing this back at KSC2, which is nice. I didn't think I'd be able to get back here, but uh, luckily I was in line with Werbury's claim. Uh, no, um, not Werbury's claim. The uh, Twin Peaks Valley I took. So I could have landed there in an emergency um, if I'd had enough fuel for my VTOLs. Uh, but yeah. Anyway, I'm just uh, going to take this off the runway. Because if you leave stuff on, um, like, Kerbal, curb inside, like, um... The, the stuff curb inside adds, it kind of often explodes. Uh, I'm not sure what that's about, but... I think a lot of people are having problems with it. I think Aganarch's turrets keep exploding because of that. Um, but yeah, anyone's going to throw guard mode on this, because why not? I mean, it's got a turret there. If something comes that way, it'll get wrecked. But anyway, um, worryingly, last episode, no, last turn, uh, Penguin left, uh, well, I left my Edis, um, Edis side undefended because Penguin hit it and I was all flustered trying to, you know, do lots of things. Um, so uh, Twitchy rolled up. And just basically took it with no 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 problem because uh, well you know no defenses there, so I'm gonna go take it back. Now the only thing I have left is my heavy assault plane. Um, I've launched my Raptor this turn, and you should fear the Raptor uh, because you could see what it could do. But I have this left over. I always just seem to have this lying around, and I've obviously fixed the tail plane since last episode. Um, so yeah, I've uh, actually assigned this a proper payload this turn instead of like probes, it's already got missiles and a drop pod for um, taking back either side because you're thinking, prob you're probably thinking, Peter, you've already taken a base, you're cheating, you're taking two, you can only take one per turn! Um, and yeah, that's probably how all of you sound, but uh, <laughs> no, because it, it was my turn, it was my base at the start, um, it means you can, you can take back one base that was yours at the start of Collaborative Warfare and one additional base, so it just makes defending stuff slightly easier. However, I'm not super happy that I'm going in with the uh, heavy assault plane because it's giant and not super maneuverable. However, it does have a pretty nice bomb payload, and uh, I actually am not using bombs today. I'm using Hellfire missiles all loaded into the cargo bay, kind of pointed down. I just think that will be more effective because if you're like dropping bombs, you have to wait until you're in range. Missiles just do the trick. So yeah, we're gonna go um, slaughter what is left. At he decided there's actually another penguin defense because he decided to help Twitchy because I've been in quotes taking his bases and Aganarch has been hitting him really hard. What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, you'll notice if you uh, uh, really pay attention that the uh, flap setup is slightly, the um, control surface setup is slightly different. Still broken somehow. Um, two of the f surfaces don't work, which is kind of annoying. Which is yeah, I don't know. This um. This plane is kind of annoying. Anyway, I'm just going to put one of the kerbals from the main cockpit into the drop pod. And yes, I don't need space for drop pods. Um, this is actually carrying a relatively light payload today. Um, and not even a very heavy weapons payload, because usually probes are the heaviest thing. A large weapons payload is pretty heavy. But I'm only taking out um, uh, like a small penguin defense and a twitchy plane. And you can see I'm getting up to some considerable speed this time. Which makes the transit pretty nice. Because it... <clears throat> Sorry. Because um, the... Uh, Transit's about 300 kilometers, which is a bit of a bit of a hassle. Um, but yeah, this this handled it like a champ. Uh, I do very much like this plane for just flying long distances because it can go anywhere. It's just very slow, so I usually watch stuff um, while it's just flying, and it's relatively stable. It needs a little input from me to keep it going straight. Um, but yeah, uh, if you're patient enough, you can get anywhere in the world with this. Well, anywhere on Kerbin, although Kerbin is our world, so yeah, anywhere in the world. And, uh, yeah, and it'll be much speedier on the way back, well, if it makes it back, because it's a giant lumbering plane against um, a lad turret, and I think a very armoured plane, well, an armed plane, like, I think Twitchy's plane has a bunch of defences on it. Anyway, skipping ahead, because, well, the theme of today is skipping through long flights. Um, 
it's time to drop our missile payload. There's a bunch of debris down there anyway. I think that's from where Twitchy kind of dinged his plane. Um, I have to say if that was me landing on that ground, my plane would probably be in considerably worse condition. Um, it's very bumpy ground, but I think he just knocked off like a cockpit or something. But anyway, it's time to kill everything. The main reason I'm hitting this actually is I don't even really need to take it back, although obviously pride. Um, <clears throat> but I don't want Twitchy having a plane right near my land. I don't want people building up air forces. Only I'm allowed air forces and Aganarchy, I guess. Unless he decides to turn on me. But he wouldn't do that because, um, I don't know, because he's being nice, I guess. Anyway, let's start dropping bombs instead of wondering how fucked I'd be if Aganarch turned on me. Um, so yeah, that's the first Hellfire missile just to, um, you know, ward things off. I'm hitting, I think I'm hitting the turret first or maybe the plane first. Um, now you're gonna probably start to think, Peter, you're dropping a hell of a lot of missiles, and that is true. But uh, the actual main reason for doing this is it'll cause Penguin's turrets to fire its missiles at my missiles and not fire them at my plane. Usually I wouldn't be so missile spammy, but from what I've learned today, um, you can really ward off missiles with other missiles. Um, unless, uh, because we set our scan intervals to one now, the first thing it looks at is missiles. So yeah, um, I don't really want to have to do too much dodging, although this does actually have flares. Um, uh, but it's not particularly maneuverable, so I wouldn't. I don't want to have to dodge too many missiles. And it's already launched a bunch of sidewinders at my Hellfires, so that's you know. Anyway, I'm just going to fire up just shit tons now because I don't want to carry too many more. And uh, you know, um, I think that'll do. I mean, that's just a ridiculous amount. That is missile spam in the extreme. It actually felt kind of bad, um, but at the same time, they took Ed aside, and it's less of a. Um, missile span more of a keep his missiles away from mine uh, keep, no not away from mine away from my plane anyway however it does look that there is a stray sidewinder there um, which is heading right for my plane so I'm popping flares and pulling you know hard fighter maneuvers in my giant bomber which uh, not super advisable but uh, look yeah it looks like that uh, missile span actually worked for making all their missiles not hit me um, this was very effective I am very I'm very much liking this bomber um, as long as it dodges that other missile. And the lock is gone. So it no longer has a lock on and I'm uh, free to watch my missiles fall. Um, I can't imagine there'll be a huge amount of stuff alive down there after I drop, I basically nuke it. Um, obviously I wouldn't actually nuke things like the Perfidious Penguin. Obviously I'd nuke Perfidious Penguin if he nuked me first. Um, and yeah, there we go. That's, uh, that's the first missile in. The one I hit, I fired very first and there's a few more. Tearing apart the plane, killing his evil Kerbals, the uh, evil Clethulians. We don't, we don't much like the Clethulians around here. They're uh, very, very mean, and you know, they support Penguin and his perfidiousness. Um, perfidiousness? That's probably a word. If it's not, add it to the dictionary, Oxford Dictionary people, who obviously watch Collaborative Warfare. Anyway, that went perfectly. Better than I thought it would. And now let's just drop our drop pod. I don't have to drop my drop pods from space because I am a man. I drop them from a plane. Um, so there goes the drop pod loaded with a Kerbal. And uh, I'll just pull the chutes in a little bit. But yeah, this plane is actually being a huge asset to my military. Uh, it's been able to rearm a shit ton of my bases. It's been able to attack at his side. Um, anyway, there goes the chutes. Anyway, after I just yeah cut through all that. It was a lot of circling. I land the thing. And then I fly back. And I actually got some pretty good speed up and some pretty good beauty shots. I got about 185 meters a second in this. And that doesn't sound super fast, but for a giant plane, that's pretty freaking fast. And then it's a 300 kilometer flight, so I'll spare you that. And cut to the landing, which was worrying. <laughs> I've changed the uh, wheel and wing setup slightly on this plane. I know, I, I know I, I, it was a plane I already had, but I just had to... There were some glitches with the engine, so I did have to move the wings, um, so, yeah. Anyway, um, because of the wing, the wheels now being attached to physic physical parts and not physicsless parts, um, it starts to rock quite a bit, which is kind of worrying when you're in a giant plane lumbering down a little runway. But yeah, so I guess that's my penance for kind of changing a plane that was already kind of set in stone is what it was. But anyway, we nailed it. What a hell of a turn. I mean... Freaking took one of Penguin's bases, hit two more, took back Edis' side, freaking crazy stuff, and put out a turret. And now I'm going to go put out another turret at um, KSC2 to protect my Raptor and to keep the evil, evil, evil Penguin away from um, my bases. He's not hitting KSC2 again. Um, I'm just going to keep adding the amount of evils I say before Penguin. 
Um, just evil, 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 evil. Anyway, um, before we do that, actually, I've probably got to get my Kerbal out and uh, put up a flag um, saying that Edda's side is once again mine. I'm doing pretty well in Collaborative Warfare. I'm now four bases up from what I used to be. I have all of my original bases. I have Twin Peaks Valley taken this turn. I have that Seven Inlet. I have that island I took from Penguin. Uh, <laughs> and I have Cola Crater from Twitchy. I'm kicking ass. I am murdering just... Uh, uh, I'm the best, basically. <laughs> so, yeah. Anyway, let's just throw tape in there. And, uh, yeah, this is now ours. We are kicking ass, is what I'd say. Uh, and then put out a gun turret at... Um, uh, KSC too, because they've proved to be very, very effective of late. But anyway, this is the end of the episode. I'm sorry that it's actually been like five days before I've, since I've uploaded anything, but I'm very busy right now. Um, and I'm also, you know, sorry, this is all post-commentary, you didn't like, get to hear me scream at missiles, but um, it's just the way it goes sometimes. So yeah, I do hope you have enjoyed this. This has been KSP with Tape. I will see you next time.